Milk has been drunk by a large portion of the American population since the Food and Drug Administration declared it safe for both cows and humans four years ago. And at that time, Monsanto was saying, there's no evidence whatsoever of any ad adverse effects, we don't use antibiotics, and this clearly showed that they had lied through their teeth. The files described areas of chronic inflammation in the heart, lung, kidney, spleen, also reproductive effects, also a whole series of other problems. It's the most comprehensive, independent assessment of the drug concludes that BST results in unnecessary pain, suffering and distress for the cows. This is not acceptable for a drug designed simply to increase milk production. It is a silly product. We have a, the industrial world is a wash in milk. We're overproducing milk. We are actually have governments around the world who pay farmers not to produce milk. So the first product Monsanto comes up with is a product that produces more of what we don't need. Of course, you'll want to inject Pozolac to every eligible cow, as each cow not treated is a lost income opportunity. But the problem was that use of the artificial hormone caused all kinds of problems for the cows. It caused something called mastitis, uh, which is a very painful uh, infection of the udders. When you milk the cow, if the cow has bad mastitis, some of the, and I don't know how to say this in a, you know, I hope people aren't watching at dinner time, but the pus from the infection of the udders ends up in the milk. And the somatic cell count, they call it, the bacteria count inside your milk, goes up. There's a cost to the cows. Uh, the cows get sicker when they're injected with RBGH. They're injected with antibiotics. We know that people are consuming antibiotics through their food. And we know that that's contributing to antibiotic resistant bacteria and diseases. And we know we're at a crisis when somebody can go into a hospital and get a staph infection and it can't be cured and they die. That's a crisis. Bad for the cow, bad for the farmer. Bad potentially for the consumer. The jury is out. We see a lot of conflicting evidence about potential health risks. And of course, as a consumer, my belief is why should I take any risk? Factory farm cows have not been the only victims of Monsanto products. Large areas of Vietnam were deforested by the U.S. military using Monsanto's Agent Orange. The toxic herbicide reportedly caused over 50,000 birth defects, as well as hundreds of thousands of cancers in Vietnamese civilians and soldiers, and in former American troops serving in Southeast Asia. Unlike the Vietnamese victims, U.S. Vietnam veterans exposed to Agent Orange were able to sue Monsanto for causing their illnesses. Monsanto settled out of court, paying $80 million in damages, but it never admitted guilt. Sleeping in a motel in Brewer, Maine one night, I woke up with terrible hay fever and my eyes were burning and I looked out of the river and there were great mounds of white foam going right down the river. And the next morning I got up and I said, my God, what was that happening last night? He said, oh, that's just the river. And I said, what do you mean? He said, well, look, every night the paper companies send the stuff down the river. I said, what are you talking about? And he said, don't you understand? That's how we get rid of the effluent from the paper mills. Well, I knew at that time, I'd been in a business, I'd sold um, oil to the paper mills, I knew all the owners, I'd been in politics, I knew the people in the towns. I knew not one constituent of the paper mills wanted to have the river polluted. And yet here the river was being polluted. And it was more or less as if we created a doom machine. In our search for wealth and, and for prosperity, we created something that was gonna destroy us. The traders who are involved in the market are not guys whose moral fiber when it comes to environmental conditions are going to be, be rattled at all. They're seeing dollars and they're making money. Brokers don't stay away from copper because it, 
it violates their religious beliefs or their environmental policies. No. And you think about it, but <laughs> it's fleeting. <laughs> it really is a fleeting moment. It's like, you know, yeah, oh yeah, well, the town being polluted down there in Peru, but uh, hey, this guy needs to buy some copper. I'm getting paid a commission too. Our information that we receive does not include anything about the environmental conditions. Because un until the environmental conditions become a commodity themselves or are being traded, then obviously we will not have anything to do with that. It doesn't come into our psyche at all. You know, it, it's so far away and it's, it, you hardly hear anything about it. I mean, keep in mind, I mean, there are things going on right in our backyard, for God's sake. We trade live hogs. I mean, there's so many pigs in the state of Carolina and it's polluting the rivers, but how often do you find out about that? At Multinational Monitor, we put together a list of the top corporate criminals of the 1990s. We went back and looked at all of the criminal fines that corporations had paid in the decade. Exxon pled guilty in connection to federal criminal charges with the Valdez spill and paid $125 million in criminal fines. General Electric was guilty of defrauding the federal government and paid $9.5 million in criminal fines. Chevron was guilty of environmental violations and paid $6.5 million in fines. Mitsubishi was guilty of antitrust violations and paid $1.8 million in fines. IBM was guilty of illegal exports and paid $8.5 million was guilty of criminal fines. environmental violations. Pfizer, the drug manufacturer, was guilty of antitrust violations and paid $20 of food violence. and drug regulatory violations. Sears was guilty million of financial fraud. Blue Cross Blue Shield of Illinois. Unical was guilty of fraud. And environmental violations. Korean Airlines. Guilty of tax. Guilty of financial fraud. 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 Guilty of financial fraud is a matter whether it's cost effective. If the chance of getting caught and the penalty are less than it costs to comply, uh, people think of it as being just a business decision. I'm drawing the metaphor of the early attempts to fly. The man going off of a very high cliff in his airplane with the wings flapping and the guy is flapping the wings and the wind is in his face and this poor fool thinks he's flying but in fact he's in free fall and he just doesn't know it yet because the ground is so far away but of course the craft is doomed to crash that's the way our civilization is the very high cliff represents the virtually unlimited resources we seem to have when we began this journey. The craft isn't flying because it's not built according to the laws of aerodynamics, and it's subject to the law of gravity. Our civilization is not flying because it's not built according to the laws of aerodynamics for civilizations that would fly. And of course, the ground is still a long way away, but some people have seen that ground rushing up sooner than the rest of us have. The visionaries have seen it and have told us it's coming. There's not a single scientific peer-reviewed paper published in the last 25 years that would contradict this scenario. Every living system of Earth is in decline. Every life support system of Earth is in decline. And these together constitute the biosphere, the biosphere that supports and nurtures all of life, and not just our life, but perhaps 30 million other species that share this planet with us. The typical company of the 20th century, extractive, wasteful, abusive, linear in all of its processes, taking from the earth, making, wasting, sending its products back to the biosphere, waste to a landfill. I myself was amazed to learn just how much stuff the Earth has to produce through our extraction process.